Welcome to the Mount Sinai Missionary Baptist Church of Memphis Incorporated YouTube channel. I thank you for once again choosing to spend a little time with us during our Thursday night Bible study. I pray that you will receive something that will prepare you for your future journey. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, teach us how to use the two sources available to us to obtain rest and peace in our lives as we live through storms of life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, tonight we want to talk about rest and peace comes through two sources. There are two sources for our peace. A lot of times we look for love and we look for rest and we look for peace. We look for riches. We look for all kinds of things to add joy to our lives, but we look for them in all the wrong places. So tonight we want to learn uh, where to look, the sources that will provide us rest and peace as we go through these storms of life. Our text is found in Mark chapter 4, verse 40 and 41. And I'll be reading from the English Standard Version, Mark chapter 4, verse 40 and 41. It reads, he said to them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the sea obey him? Now, knowing what we know about Jesus, I don't find it amazing that he could speak to the wind and the waves, and the waves would hush, and the sea would be still. How many parents would like to have uh, their little children, their little rowdy children, to have that kind of obedience to them? That when they speak, they'll shut up and sit down and, and just chill. But... Uh, Evidently, we don't have that authority, but Jesus has that, uh, that power and authority over everything. Where there had been so much unrest and turmoil, now, all of a sudden, all is at rest and peaceful, simply by Jesus speaking to them. I don't find it at all over the top, because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and there was nothing that was made that was not made by Him. And then the Word that was with God, that was God, uh, was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld His glory as the only begotten son of our heavenly father, speaking mainly of Jesus Christ. When God said, let there be light, and there was light, Jesus was right there with him. And, 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 and now we see that Jesus has all power in heaven and in earth since he rose from the dead. That leads us to have faith that Jesus can speak to the wind and to the, to the sea and they will find their proper place. Then the word became flesh, as I mentioned. It became humankind and we are able to witness this great miracle that he did. He spoke to the wind and the waves. He just spoke during that time that he was here on earth and dead folks rose. Blind folks received their sight and deaf folks started hearing again. He, he can speak into our situations and the crooked ways turn to straight ways. I, I, I'm not going to go down that road. There's, so, there's a, such a good sermon there, maybe one day. But Luke chapter 8, verse 49 through 56 says, While he was still speaking, someone from the ruler's house came and said, Your daughter is dead. Do not be troubled, the teacher. Don't, do not trouble the teacher anymore. But Jesus, on hearing this, answered him, 
do not fear. Only believe she is, she will be well. And when he came to the house, he allowed no, no one to enter with him except Peter, John, and James, and the father and mother of the child. And all were weeping and mourning for her. But he said, do not weep, for she is not dead, but sleeping. And just like we can wake up a loved one when they're asleep, Jesus can wake up his loved ones. Because no matter what state they're in, dead or alive, he's able to speak and wake them up. Verse 53 says, and they laughed at him uh, knowing that she was dead. And you'll either cry out with fear or you'll laugh at some of the things that Jesus can do in your life. And both of them laughing and acting in fear will be out of doubt or lack of belief. Verse 54 says, but taking her in his hand, he called saying, child, arise. And her spirit returned and she got up at once. And he directed that some, something should be given to her to eat. And her parents were amazed, but he charged them to tell no one what had happened. There are times when in my life that there have, have been great turmoil and it seems that there was no hope of peace. And as soon as I cried out to Jesus for help, it was as if he was just waiting for me to cry out to him. And he calmed my troubled heart. If I was at Mount Sinai and we had opened back up right now I, I, and, and I was teaching Bible study, I would ask the question, is there anybody here that have ever cried out to Jesus for help and he heard your cry and pitied your groans? I'm sure that somebody listening to me has cried out to Jesus for help and he heard your cry. There are times when it seems though as though our cry is falling on deaf ears. Israel was in Egypt and suffering for 40 years. But then the day came that God heard their cry. Exodus chapter 2 verse 23 through 25 says, And several years later after the king of Egypt died, the Israelites were groaning beneath their burdens in deep trouble because of their slavery and weeping bitterly before the Lord. He heard their cry from heaven and he remembered his promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob to bring their descendants back into the land of Canaan. And looking down upon them, he knew that it was time for their rescue. And God always knows the right time to rescue us out of our troubles, out of our storms. So let's look at rest in peace comes through two sources. The first source that rest in peace comes through is it comes through faith. Our faith, our trust in Jesus. Fear is unbelief. And it is a great hindrance to our faith. Jesus asked his disciples a challenging question. The disciples were going through two human experiences, but they were aware of only one. They experienced the terrible fear. What they failed to see was completely hidden from them. They were experiencing the root cause of fear, which is little faith. Their trust of Jesus Christ, trusting their lives in his hands and that they were completely in his keepings and under his care. And I remember something that Jesus said in, in the garden. He said, said, those that you have given me, I have lost none. And that's still true, even in the storms of life. 
those that God has given us, that's us, believers. He has and will never lose any of us. We are in his care. So their trust of Christ was lacking. And their trust was short, was incomplete, immature. They were not sure that he was aware of their desperate need. But he was just as he is aware of all of our needs, always. As a matter of fact, he was the one who asked, why are you so fearful? It was as though he was shocked of their lack of faith, not the storm. Fear can be a good thing or a bad thing. Fear sometimes causes us to respond with more vigor and strength and intelligence and wisdom that is well beyond our norm. But then fear can, can, can make us face three things. Fear can make us face the reality of ourselves. Sometimes we think more highly of ourselves than we ought to, and fear can bring us down to level ground. Fear can cause us to, to realize what we really are, who we really are. Fear will put our faith on display. Can I say that again? Fear will put our faith on display. And then fear can make us face our desperate need. They and the disciples, nor we, are perfect. We're not, we're not completely self-sufficient. We're not self-contained. And we're not adequate for all the things that we need. We, we, can't, we can't supply all of our needs. We are not at the high point of our existence, nor the epitome of what man should be. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know in Jesus' return, we shall be like him. And we shall be one with him. Humanism and humanistic philosophy, which is that man is all, is a bunch of malarkey. Man is not the crowning glory of our behavior or our thoughts. We desperately need to face the fact that no matter how well we behave or how high we may think, we are still in a, liable to have trouble and terrible storms in our life that will swoop down upon us and they will engulf us like waves of the ocean rolling in one upon another. And then the final wave that no man can handle, the great tidal wave of death, drowns the breath out of life, out of us. So we must face the fact that there are desperate needs that must be handled in our lives and that we must face the fact that we are incapable of handling them ourselves. Fear can make us face our needs for help beyond ourselves. Life holds many situations for us that places us in the place of the disciples. And if it was not for Jesus coming to our rescue, we would perish in our little faith. With Jesus, things would always go better. Romans 8 and 28 says, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. And he's constantly working all things out for our good, even though we have to go through some storms. He's still working them out for our good. And then life would be so much smoother and peaceful with Jesus in charge. 
John chapter 14, verse 27 says, I'm leaving you uh, with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give isn't fragile like the peace the world gives. So don't be troubled or afraid. That's the Living Bible version of that verse. And then there's the assurance and confidence of hope that would flood our hearts and our minds so much more with Jesus in charge. Romans 5 and 1 and 2 says, therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Verse 3 says, and not only so, but we, but we glory in tribulations also. Knowing that tribulation worketh patience and patience experience and experience hope and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. The Holy Ghost sheds abroad in our hearts daily, constantly. The love of God, the love that God has for us. He also measures out the exact amount of faith that we need to make it through any given day. Then he comforts us. Remind us that everything is going to be all right. Now, let's look at deliverance for a minute out of this storm. Just as the storm was strong and powerful, Jesus provides a powerful deliverance and a great calm. Jesus is sovereign Lord over all nature and he can do what he will for us. He arose and rebuked the storm and then there was an instantaneous calm. When Jesus speaks, winds obey, seas obey, All of the elements of this world obey except mankind. But now don't miss this. The disciples misread both the situation and Jesus Christ's presence. When they woke Jesus up, he pointed to their fear immediately. He didn't ask them what's wrong. Which got you all upset? He pointed to their fear. Even before he rose and and, and answered their needs, he spoke to their fear. Or he spoke in essence to them about their fear. He questioned them. Why are ye of so little faith? This says that it's very important to know that all of the problems of the world are known by Jesus and he's able to providentially overrule them. He does not have to rush to meet our needs. Problems are not a danger or threat to the child of God. This does not mean that we will not suffer or die, neither that we do not have to bear terrible storms. The disciples had to experience this storm and they had to experience many other storms. But Jesus Christ was with them and he is always with us. He promised to be and he's going to keep his promise. And in the storms, he will strengthen us and carry us through all of our storms of life. In fact, As with the disciples, God uses the storms of life to teach us to trust him even more and more. If there were no trials, there would be no need to trust him. And how often do we misread the presence of Jesus, thinking that he's out of reach? How often do we misread the storm, thinking that it's out of control? How often do we misread Jesus thinking that he don't care about us? 
thinking that he has left us to fend for our sins. Now, the problem is we are not walking close enough to him to be conscious of his presence and his care. He will speak and calm the storms that are the very at the very best time, at the perfect time, after everyone has learned what they are supposed to learn through the storm. Matthews chapter 19, verse 26 says, but Jesus held them, beheld them. And said unto them, with men, it is, this is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. There's nothing that's too hard for God. Matthew 28 and 18, Jesus says, uh, he, Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. He's saying, I've got all, of, all authority over all of the elements. The wind, the waves, they all have to obey my authority. Luke chapter one, verse 38 says, for with God, nothing shall be impossible. In other words, Christ can come in a storm of life for us. And Jesus can strengthen us to go through any storm of life. When we believe all things are possible and all storms can be still, then we can have rest and peace. There was a centurion uh, experiencing a storm in his life and he went to Jesus. And I think this is just before the lady came to him with the issue of blood. But Jesus, instead of continuing on to help this centurion, he paused his journey and helped the lady with the issue of blood because he didn't have to hurry because he could even speak from where he was and the centurion servant would be healed. So he tended to the lady with the issue of blood. And you notice that something peculiar about those verses when he stopped her bleeding stopped. That shows the power of Jesus and his presence. And Jesus said to the centurion, go thy way. And as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. When Jesus said she would be healed, she was healed or or, or, or his servant was healed. Now, a woman experienced a bleeding issue, and this is the woman that I just mentioned. Uh, that was a storm in her life. But Jesus. And whenever I see but Jesus, but God, but the Holy Spirit, it reminds me that they are about to turn our situations around. I might be sinking right now, but but Jesus is waiting for me to stretch out my hand and catch his and he'll lift me up. I hear somebody saying, but I'm way down. And I say back to you, even if he has the weak reach way down, way, way, way down. He'll do it. And he's able to pick you up. Matthew chapter nine, verse 21 uh, and 22 says, for she said within herself, this is the woman with the issue of blood. If I may but touch his garment, I shall be made whole. But Jesus turned him about. And when he saw her, he said, daughter, be of good courage, but good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. And the woman was made whole from that hour. See how much power is in the words of Jesus Rest and peace comes through two sources. We've covered one through faith. Now let's look briefly at the fact that peace and rest comes through Jesus's power and his word. Matthew 9 and 6 says, but that ye may know that the son of man hath power on earth to forgive sins. Then saith he to the sick man of palsy. Arise, take up your bed and go unto thine house. 
Matthew 11 and 28 says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest unto your soul. No matter how burdened down you might feel. And a lot of times when we're burdened down, we feel like we're all alone. But but Jesus cares. Remember that. And he's able to secure your rest and peace. He's able to deliver you from your storms. John 16 and 33 says, these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace. In the world ye shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. And I'm so glad that I serve a master that has overcome the one that's trying to overcome me. All of the upheaval that's going on now, I can have rest and peace because he has overcome the world. Acts 10 and 38 says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good. And healing all that were oppressed of the devil. For God was with him. And then Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 through 22 says. What is the exceeding greatness of his power to us who believe. According to the workings of his mighty power which he wrought in Christ. When he raised him from the dead. And when you can raise somebody up from the dead, you're talking about power, dynamo power, all power. And one glad morning, when this life is over, I'll fly away and be at rest because Jesus has all power. The verse continues by saying, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places, far above all principalities and power and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in that which is to come, and had put all things under his feet, and gave him to be head over all things to the church. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Before the storms even start to raging, I have to check with Jesus and make sure it's okay with him. Woo. Ephesians 3 and 20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. And then Hebrews chapter two, verse 17 and 18 said, wherefore in all things it behooved him to be made like unto his brethren that he might be merciful and faithful, a uh, merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God to make reconciliations for the sins of the people. For in that he himself has suffered being tempted, he is able to secure them that are tempted. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. And then Hebrews chapter four, verse 15 and 16 says, for we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with our feelings or our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are yet without sin. So let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in times of need. And be reminded that he is a very present help in trouble as well as in times of trouble. When we are sinking and when we were sinking in sin, Jesus came and took our place. We were sinners. But he became sin in our place that we could become the righteousness of God that he was. How did he do this? I'm glad you asked. He died and he was buried in a borrowed tomb. But after three days, he arose with all power in heaven and in earth in his hand. 
power to calm the storms of our lives. There is power in the name of Jesus. That's all I've got for tonight, so let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, continue to send storms to grow us and strengthen us and continue to speak this to the storms of our lives that we may learn to trust you more and more. In this stormy election period that we're going through, we ask that you would speak to our hearts and remind us that we are safe and you've got it all in control. Give us a heart to do our part by participating in the voting process. In the powerful name of our storm calmer, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Remember, wear your mask, uh, practice social distancing, and wash your hands often. With these things, we can save lives. We can get control of this COVID-19 virus. And don't forget, the life that you save might be your own. So be safe and trust Jesus to calm the storms of your life and work towards increasing your faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So long.